This is The Unholy Union. A podcast where you'll be subjected to highly offensive marital discourse. If you do not feel insulted during this week's episode, don't worry, we'll try harder next week. If you can relate to our ramblings, we want to be friends with you. If you believe that we take it too far or our mouths are too much for you, then with as much love and sincerity as we can muster, you can suck it. Welcome to The Unholy Union. Today's theme is data security. You mean motif. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Motif. All right. Theme. My dad will get a kick out of that. <laughs> so what is data security? Uh, it's very important nowadays that everything is in tech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I mean, like. But by definition, what do you, what would be your definition if you had to just say it well like for for personal stuff or in general data security i don't care personal not personal all the things well everything has moved more and more to the cloud type aspect of technology and everything is done online so everything is flowing through the internet and data security is making sure your accounts are secure Ooh. Data secure. <laughs> it, it, you're putting secure in your definition of data security. Yes. Okay. And what's a synonym for secure? Protected. There you go. Yeah. Protected. Making sure you're protected online and also ensuring that your files that you do put online and store in these cloud services are probably encrypted by your, your yourself. God. <laughs> Not don't rely on other people's encryption because a lot of the times cloud service providers will have the keys to the kingdom. And if they do get hacked or they have a rogue employee, your data is screwed. So you said a lot just now. We're going to break that down here. Um, So a definition that I got off the internet. The unsecure internet? Yes. You can't take that. No, it was HTTPS. Okay. Uh The definition that I found was when you give your personal identifiable information or PII, as we're coming to know the term, to a company and a bad actor or a hacker Mm -hmm. steals your information with the intent of selling it for profit or using it for identity theft, the purpose of data security is to stop that from happening. Right. For sure. So it definitely sounds scary. It It sounds like it's a really big deal. It's a really big problem, too. But to play devil's advocate for just just a second here, right? You have a lot of information on the Internet about you, even without handing it over to, let's say, you make a Gmail account. There's a lot of information about you, like county records will say that you bought your house or you have a car or whatever. So you have all these records that are already out there with your information So me giving Google either a real phone number or a fake number, my real home address or a fake home address, and then if that information got out there, it's like, couldn't they already find that on a county website? Possibly, but if they were to hack your Google account, it could be a big problem, more so than just finding your phone number. A lot of people store their tax returns. A lot of people will store their birth certificates. Anything, you know, social security cards, they'll they'll back all that stuff up in some kind of cloud storage. So if their account gets hacked because of the lack of personal security, that's fucked up. That could be a big, big, big problem for some people. Look, what was it? Experian that got hacked? The freaking credit company? Right. They got hacked and that wasn't that social security numbers and stuff? Yes. Yeah, it was like full on everything about and it's a credit company. They know everything about you. Mm-hmm. They can tell you whether or not you can buy a fucking car. I guess I just mean like, isn't that information already out there, even if you're not already handing it to Google? Yeah, but that I so it bothers me a lot. When people think that I have nothing to hide, so I don't care about privacy. That pisses me off a lot because America was started in private, the USA. It was started behind the scenes. If the British knew about the talks that they were having about rebellion and stuff, it would have been squashed. 
So everything was talked about behind the scenes in private. What? Is it not making sense? I don't know how that relates. No, no, it relates because you're saying it's already out there. So well, why you're does it matter? A military coup. Too. I know, I know, but still, it's data. It it's all data. Them talking about a revolution behind the scenes is the same as you posting. It's not the same, but it's this. It's data that if a bad party knew about it. Benedict Arnold. Well, he was a dick. If if a bad party knew about it and had that data, it would have changed things. So it could ruin your life if you let your data leak. I think that's a stretch for it, a comparison, but I, I, we're going to roll with it. No, I'm just saying privacy is very important no matter who you are and what you're talking about. Nobody needs to fucking know what you're talking about. So. Okay, well, <laughs> that's interesting because our next topic related to data security is all the uh, congressional debates and the statements. What the heck is that called? When you go to Congress and you give a testimony. Yeah, testimony. Thank you. That's the word. Um, so when you go to Congress, you give your testimony. Uh, the one that is real hot right now is the CEO of TikTok. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we're going to get into this because... We're going to see how far we can stretch your revolutionary war comparison it, it, here. It's It wasn't intended on being a one-to-one one one comparison. <laughs> it's just the fact that great things start in private. And your data is your data. Right. But we live in a world of social media. Okay, and Where that's fine. you are literally putting everything out there. And that's fine if you want to do that. But if you want to have a private conversation and not have the NSA or Facebook or TikTok. I love that you said NSA. We're going to get into this. Snooping on your stuff. Then you should be able to do that. That's all there is to it. And encrypted apps like Signal and things are perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Well, CEO of TikTok gave his testimony, and the reason why he was called to do so is because there's this large concern over whether or not the United States of America should ban TikTok from being available to its citizens due to the idea of a potential data breach and or data request you know, as a country, the government of China, to TikTok right. and requesting the data of all of its users. That's a valid concern. Why? Because <laughs> China aren't most or almost all businesses in, in China part of the Chinese government. So TikTok is a, we'll call it subsidiary, I guess, for of, lack of a better term. Of the Chinese government? Of BitDance. ByteDance. Dance. ByteDance. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, ByteDance. And ByteDance technically is owned by the Chinese government, partially or in whole, I'm not sure. And it sounds like they do, the government does select who runs their companies. Okay, well, then they're, the companies are in the government pocket. Okay, but going back to the idea of this is A, social media, you're putting almost everything out there. I mean... I don't think they allow nudity, but I'm sure some people try. Um, you're literally putting everything that is you on social media all the time. Like, that's what people do. That's how they become influencers and make their money, right? So the CEO of TikTok went to Congress, and this was from an ABC News article, and basically explained that there is no evidence of a data breach or even potential for a data breach at this point in time. He went on to assure the Congress that um, there there isn't a there is no evidence of this, um, and he has not seen any evidence come across his desk either that it could happen for a data breach. For a data breach, okay, but of course they're going to say that. I mean, I think that's a stupid thing to have him testify about because any company can have a data breach. I mean, we've seen it. I don't know how many fucking times over the past year. But again, years, we're whatever. talking about data that can be found 
anywhere well, about I mean, you. Yeah, but you're talking about technically a, uh, I wouldn't say they're an enemy of the U.S. because we're pretty heavily involved in trade with China, but we're not. It, there's tension there. Yeah, we're not best of friends, so I can understand that aspect of possibly banning TikTok. I can't. Why? I mean, I'm not there. I I, I don't know. It's it's just having a you know a tension uh, country that I mean they're not really trustworthy. I guess you could say to to the U.S.'s eyes, having probably one of the most popular apps in the country in our country, and having all that data that they could ask for. And I'm talking location data. I mean, you've got military members that have cell phones. And yeah, I know you you fucking don't allow them to put it on there. Somebody's going to do it. And that's a national security issue. Um, That's (laughs) that's a national security issue. If you have a bunch of millions upon millions of people using TikTok and a bunch of them are military members that use TikTok to stay in touch with their family while they're overseas. Well, you might have just shown up on, you know, your location data is now in TikTok and in Chinese hands and you but just revealed not, a, you just revealed a secret base. But it's not though because they as in TikTok have never and don't foresee ever giving over the data. How can they say that though? How can they say I don't foresee ever having that happen? Well, th- th- of course you're going to say that, but how does that make any sense? China can say t- tomorrow can say, "I want that data. Send it." I mean, okay, so if that's true, if China did request all this data, then they have, let's say, secret locations, like you were just saying. We have seen before. A certain person in a very high political position misuse her servers. Okay. And data leaked, and it wasn't the end of the world? Well, okay, to be fair, it should have been. The end of the world? For that person. Well... Yes, 100%, because if you or I... She should have received more... Yeah, well, backlash or if, something. If, but. You, if you or I were in a position of in the government that we worked with secret, top secret documents or something like that, and we treated them like they weren't top secret and we decided to download them to our fucking Google Drive, then, yeah, we should probably get in trouble, too. And I bet you we would have gotten in trouble more so than that person. <laughs> do we just say it do we say who we're talking about no it's a mystery <laughs> if somebody if you have questions on who it is then email us google <laughs> um okay so but to, let's compound on this a little bit so we keep talking about tiktok being a chinese owned company and that's one of the concerns right well, that can, can i expand on that chinese owned company type deal yeah i mean I just I find it kind of hypocritical, too, though, that Congress hasn't really called Apple into the field and into to testify on, you know, their Chinese partnerships with manufacturing and stuff. Because, I mean, what would stop them from embedding some microprocessor or something into every single iPhone that they manufacture and sending over here to where that thing calls home? You know, whenever they want to, whenever they turn, flip a switch. Well, and I think, and I want to hit this real, real quick here in just a second. Um, I think it's because it's a Chinese owned company yeah. versus Apple is quote unquote American. Right. I mean, but it, it's American, but it's made by. Right. They literally import 90% of well, the it, materials. It's made by China. And from what I've seen, shit work conditions. Right. It's messed up. So anybody who's out there who's an Apple diehard and you think that you're buying an American made phone, just do a little research. Right. Well, it, I mean, your clothes, anything. You can oh, no, I know. I mean, I like iPhones. I don't 
like them as much anymore now that I got the S23 Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh-huh. but uh yeah, that that's but it's crazy. To compound on that idea though, right? That it's Chinese versus American, I saw a Times article that talked about data breaches. And guess how many there have been in 2023 alone? We are in March, in yeah. the very end of March 2023. Well, guess how many there have been? I don't know. In 2023. 100. Oh. <laughs> well, see, I bet you there's more than what's even listed in that article. 15. And that's probably mainstream big companies, right? I will tell you um, the three. LastPass is one of them, right? Um, No. Okay. There were three in March. The big name ones that I pulled out were AT&T. T-Mobile was in there, too. I didn't pull that one. November. I think it was November. Yes, there was something. In, yeah, there's a lot. There's yeah. a whole list. But just for 2023, AT&T, Amazon, and the U.S. freaking government. Well, the U.S. government got hacked before with the uh, Office of Personnel Management, right? Yeah. So for them to be worried about a data breach. No, from- I know. They can't, even, they can't even secure their own data. And you know, what really pisses me off about all this is... You're just a customer and you get shafted. They send you a fucking gift certificate for one year of identity theft protection. But it's one year. Yeah. But I'm like, (laughs) hang on a second. You know, I'm I'm in my 30s. Right. I've got a long time to live, motherfucker. (laughs) And my social's now out there floating around because of you. Uh huh. Now. Now, why don't they get punished for that? For for shit data retention and things like that exactly i don't understand american versus chinese yeah nobody is perfect but compound on that one more time two of our favorite social media platforms as well twitter in 2022 had a data breach of over 400 million users data (laughs) yeah good facebook in 2021 half a billion that's see, I mean, that, so that's again, all we're targeting TikTok because, in my mind, it's a Chinese owned program, right? And to an extent, I will concede that I understand the concern. But when you look at the breaches that we've had in 2023 alone, yeah, as well as all the other American quote unquote companies, uh, social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook. How? Why? Well, Why is this even a conversation? <laughs> well, who's uh, <clears throat> who's probably the first customer to buy all that hack data? Probably China. <laughs> so they. So got, I mean, they got it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. They probably buy all that stuff anyway. But it, I don't know. I just I think it's more of a they they do a lot of stuff as symbolic measures and oh look we're doing something against China. Da, 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 da. It's like no. You're not, but okay. What's that called? Virtue signal. Yeah, that's a hundred percent what that stuff is. I mean, mm-hmm. they they tend the government tends to do that a lot. And I, I found this very hypocritical. Um, I almost said I found it funny, um, but I mean hypocritical that they even called out, you know, Mr. CEO of TikTok. What about the knockout challenge that was all all over TikTok and you're responsible for what's being posted and no he's not endangering our children and you don't think that shit was on Twitter or Facebook? No, that shit was that shit is still being posted there, I'm sure. Right. I mean so if a challenge exists, you can guarantee it's across every social media platform. But why why is that on the CEO of TikTok? I don't understand that. See, th- this is the type of shit that bothers me. People are so, so, like, not they don't want to take responsibility for anything. So they want to push it off on the, the platform that they're they're uh, they're using. Right. Rather than the, the community f- that they're in that's well, posting this. Well, how about if you don't like seeing that kind of stuff or you don't want your kids seeing that kind of stuff, delete that shit. Right. Fucking delete it. Because right. that that I, the the internet is still the wild wild west. It will always be that way, and there's no changing it. I don't know what 
What do you think you're going to see when you let 15 year olds get on a, a platform, give them millions of potential viewers? They're going to do stupid shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, look at Jackass. Teenagers from the dawn of time have wanted to be popular. Yeah, look at Jackass. Mm -hmm. the, you, you know how many copycats there were for, for Jackass? I mean, yes. I was one of them. <laughs> I, mean, I remember, honey. I mean, seriously. like, well, I, Imagine if I had that platform back when I was no. that age. You know, a teenager. That would I probably wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> or I'd be rich. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. That's winning the lottery or getting hit by a bus. Yeah, probably. I probably would have major body issues and stuff, but... The point is, is... I mean, Johnny Knoxville's still going strong. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Well, all that to say, um, I also wanted to kind of recap what data security is and how to secure your data. Yeah. There are a couple of different ways, from password managers to two-step authentication, focusing on your URLs and virus and malware. We're going to break it down. Just a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to do some recommendations. And no, we do not get any kickbacks from, my, from any of these. This is not an advertisement. No. Just some of the ones that we have used and like and enjoy. Yep. So as far as password managers go, Bitwarden all day. Yeah, I like... Uh, so Bitwarden is one of the first and one of the only password managers that is actually open source. Explain open source because it kind of sounds scary if yeah. you've never heard well, that before. Open source definitely sounds scary. Um, it it's source code, so how that thing runs is posted to the public. And the benefit to doing that is you get free QA on your code. Um, people are going into Bitwarden's GitHub or whatever, wherever they post their their code, and they review it. And they propose improvements or they say, hey, there's a big security flaw right here. And they'll end up sending Bitwarden, a, you know, a proposed improvement to fix that. It's very cool stuff when you have a giant community like that that comes together and uh, essentially makes a product. Makes a product better. Make, yeah, it makes a for product all users. better. And because it's open source, there's ways to run it for free on your own server. It's kind of, it's a pain in the ass. But <laughs> but uh, Bitwarden's super cheap and it's hosted, I think it last I checked, it was hosted on uh, Microsoft servers, which, I mean, how do you get more secure than that? Truthfully. Well, Microsoft, you know, they've yeah, but had their breaches too. This but... stuff is encrypted. So if they have a breach, your password blobs as long as you have a strong master password, good luck hacking it. Right. Uh, are there any other password managers you would recommend? Um, uh, truthfully, I mean, I like one password for like Apple products. Their user experience is very good. I don't believe they've ever had a breach, but they are closed source. So that's kind of a big negative to me. It's kind of expensive. I think it's like six bucks a month. For a family plan, while Bitwarden is like 40 bucks for the whole year, hmm. it's like half the price. That's math. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's close to half, um, half off. Less than four bucks, right? <clears throat> yeah, three something. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I like I like both of them. One password is really good if you're into like the Apple ecosystems and all that. But um, another big, big development is pass keys that is coming out which is supposedly going to remove passwords entirely from people's logins oh lord well we'll see i mean if you do start creating pass keys i have a big recommendation and you don't create them through your phone's operating system you create them and save them into a password manager that way if you decide to switch os's on your phone you can easily do it and then easily log into your password manager on the new phone and you're good to go. I feel like you kind of lost me a little bit. No, I mean. Pass phrases? Is that what you said? No, pass keys. Pass keys. Okay. Yeah, it's like saved into your phone's encrypted, I don't know, storage. And Is it a word? Is it a word? Like 
pass no, key. You, so you can scan a QR code on your, like if you're trying to log into some, face, we'll just say Facebook. I don't think they have pass keys yet, but we'll just say it. Trying to log into Facebook on your computer, you would type your email in, then it would show you a QR code saying scan this with your phone. You scan it with your phone and then it pulls that, it communicates somehow and says, hey, this is actually that person. So instead of typing in a password, you're backing up some kind of authenticator, I guess you could say, into your phone or your password manager that allows you to log in. So you're not typing anything in. Key loggers are a big problem. That's why password managers are money, too. Okay. I, I Okay, that makes more sense because of key loggers. Okay, I can buy Well, that. key loggers, and then it's... It still seems like an extra step. Well, it is, but a I lot of... I guess that's the point. Yes. A lot of people also... Well, let me back up a little bit. It is an extra step, but it proves that you actually have the phone. Because that's the other thing, too, is like... You have to scan your face if you have an iPhone or you have to use your fingerprint if you have Android. So you're proving that it's actually you trying to log in. So it's a way to be two-step authentication without... The password. Right. Right. Okay. So the other big benefit to that is most people don't use password managers. Yeah. They don't. They use... Especially our parents' generation. Yeah. They use, you know... The same password over. Yes. And over. (laughs) Um... I like Windows 1, 2, 3 or some stupid shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they use that on every website that they have. Well, password. Yeah, password 1, 2, 3. Yay. <laughs> well, that's a big problem. One site gets hacked. Guess what? All your logins are now ruined. So if you have password 1, 2, 3 on your PlayStation account, eh, who cares if somebody hacks that? But then you have password 1, 2, 3 on your Gmail account or your banking account. What are you going to do? They're all the same. They can they can access every single one of your accounts. So that's Change another it to password one two three four. Yes, <laughs> that's why password manager is uh, is important too because it will generate a strong multi character, multi type of character password. Well, until pass keys come out, they're already out on certain websites. I think Best Buy and PayPal is pushing for them but i haven't seen my paypal account be updated yet oh so and the the cat is distracting me sorry um until pass keys come out um two-step authentication is important right because you have a password and then you have another step to authenticate that you are your true self and can log in to whatever platform you're trying to access yeah it's something you know which is your password and then something you have which would be something physical that you have well it all depends but yes most of the time it's something you have which would be an authenticator a separate authenticator app on your phone or a security key which you could put on your key ring cool do you have any recommendations for a two-step authentication well Yes, but it depends on how deep you want to go down the security rabbit hole. Keep it high. Keep it high level here. Well, I like YubiKeys. Um, They are a physical device. It looks like a little flash drive. You, You at least have to have two. So when you attach it to an account, you have a backup. You attach both of them to whatever account has the security key or allows the security key. That way you can shove one somewhere, put it in a safety deposit box, whatever you want to do to keep it safe if your house burns down. You're not fucking locked out of your Gmail account. That's super important. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so those are good. And if you want to keep it pretty simple, you can do Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. That's an app on your phone. And you can set that up to where it will back up your codes to the cloud. Kind of insecure, I think. But you then encrypt those codes with another master password. That one is easy because it's backed up to the cloud. So if you lose your phone or whatever, you can type in your encrypted password, your encryption password on that new device, and it will pull in all your codes offline and unlock them for you. I like that one. However, 
The flip side to this is what I like to do. People are going to dog the shit out of me, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. I two factor my password manager. So something I know, master password, something I have, YubiKey. And then I put all my one time passwords or authentication codes into Bitwarden. Because that just gives you one little extra step of protection when you try to log into an account. So if somebody was to hack my password for whatever, my Gmail account, they can't just simply log in with that password. They still need that code. Mm -hmm. And good luck getting my uh, hacking my Bitwarden with my UB keys and stuff attached to it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, another tip for how to secure your data and be secure while on the interwebs is to ensure that your URL starts with HTTPS. Did yes. I say too many T's? HTTPS. That means you are searching, surfing securely. Right. If you don't see that S, you could be at risk for, what do they call them? They call hijacking. Them, yes, hijacking. Um, ads that could be malicious. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they could... Uh, it's a man in the middle attacks where if you are on a website that requires payment, they could inject their payment codes and stuff in there. So you feel like you're typing in your payment to, I don't know, whatever website you're trying to buy something from. But in actuality, Victoria's Secret. Yeah, you're actually <laughs> you're actually sending your uh, data to somebody in their mom's basement. Right. (laughs) Last tip is to ensure that your antivirus, anti-malware software is up to date and running the scanning your device. And if you have Windows, what, 10 and 11, Mm -hmm. YOLO with Windows Defender. Windows Defender is awesome. Um, It's built by Microsoft and it runs very well on a Microsoft computer. I have never really found the need to have any supplemental antivirus when I have Windows Defender running. Hmm. But I'm also not a dumbass going to fucking porn site XYZ and downloading weird shit. (laughs) So that's another thing, too, is practice... Safe surfing. Safe surfing. Put a condom on your safe surfing. Okay. (laughs) Find the S in your (laughs) HTTPS. I mean, seriously, that's that's a big problem is people downloading files and getting tricked and then and then being fished. I mean, yeah, happens all the time. And the human aspect is huge to all of this. Yes, for sure. I mean, there there are big, big problems with AI and the ability to sound like family members. And they will call people and they'll be that they can just the hacker or whoever the, the scammer can type a name in or type a paragraph in and request money like, hey, I'm in jail or, hey, my car broke down. Can you, Would you mind sending me a thousand bucks so I can get my car fixed? I'll pay you back. And it'll sound like your mom. Mm-hmm. You're like, holy shit. And it's all because they stole their voice profile somehow. I don't know. You post a video on social right, media. Right. And they, they pull it out. They take that and they make a voice model out of whoever's voice that is in that video. It's cr- fucking crazy. AI is scary. And I hope that we do a segment on it one one of these days. But um, it's, yeah, very, very crazy what the world is coming to with technology. Fucking Skynet. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> needs a bunker. <laughs> well, in Florida, you hit water and sand. I don't know if that would really work underground. Boat. bunker. <laughs> what, what can we find that we can put high? I don't know. On stilts. Okay. So we gave some tips <laughs> on how to be secure with your data. Uh, we talked about all things data security. Anything to add? No, I, th- I mean, th- those are base level stuff, base level things. There's there's plenty of things you can do to your browser, you know, to, uh, extensions and things that will help you with track errors and ads and things. But we can always go through that later. Awesome. Well, I think we are ready for a kid talk. Yeah, we're going to talk all things data security with our daughter. Oh, goodness. And- <laughs> she thinks innocent mind is not gonna i'm just (laughs) i don't know what she's gonna say it'll be fun people want to do what (laughs) Uh. 
This will be fun. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, what do you think the internet is? Like electricity? You think the internet is electricity? Yes. Okay. So, what what do you do on the internet? Internet is um like screens on oh. your phone. Yeah. What else? And tablets. That's true. Computers. So what do you think you should do to be safe on the internet? To be safe on the internet is to not use electricity. To not use electricity? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, there's bad people on the internet. So what do you do to be safe? Not listen to bad people. Not listen to bad people. Uh, not if they say bad words. Don't don't play games that are bad and things like that. Don't repeat. Don't repeat bad words. Don't repeat bad words. Well, that's good. You have anything there, Mama? Should you give other people your passwords? No. Why not? Because if they do, like if they. Send it to their mom, then they might know their their home passcode. Oh, okay. Well, do you have anything else to say about the internet? Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Innocent minds talking about the internet. I don't know. I feel like she knows what to do and what not to do while on the internet. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she's... we've had those conversations with her, but I feel like maybe we need to reinforce it a little bit. And to be clear, she's not on the internet ever without us being present. So very true. Very true. Yeah. Like on the internet, I guess I just mean like Roblox, which is like parental controls locked Oh, down. yeah. She can't even get messages from people that. I don't approve of. And then I have the app on my phone. Parents, I have the app on my phone that allows me to see everything that goes on with her account. Right. Um, So we definitely have her stuff locked down, but maybe we'll have another little conversation about being safe on the Internet. All right. Well, that's it for today. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. It's what you do with the things you love.